Hi, my name is Bill Goebel from Exeter. In this educational event, we'll cover part four of the series on getting good failure rate data. In part four, we're going to cover combination methods. Combination of what? Estimation and prediction. Combinations of all the knowledge that we've developed over decades. We'll talk about a calibrated FMEDA and we'll compare these different estimation and prediction techniques. Think about this estimation and prediction. I showed you a sheet of paper where estimation gave us 1,200 fits and prediction gave us 1,500 in part three. If these methods were any good, estimation and prediction should give the same answer. Think about that for a minute. Why don't these things give us the same answer? And when they don't, it's no wonder Scott Adams makes up cartoons about failure rate data. Look at these results. In this case, both methods seem to be seriously flawed. Of course, as we talked about in previous parts, they kind of are. Bad component database for the part stress, bad assumptions for the estimation. If we could combine estimation and prediction into one method that actually gave results where the different estimates and the predictions kind of matched up, that would be great. And that's the goal. At Exeter, we created a methodology which we call the calibrated FMEDA. Now this was painful. Here's what we did. We looked at the field failure data from a number of different sources, including ORITA and users and software tools that gather failure rate data like Exodus SILSTAT. And we compared the device lambda with an FMEDA result, device to device, total to total, or dangerous to dangerous. And what happens if they don't match? You have to ask why. And you have to dig in. And you have to study the failures. And eventually, you begin to see the picture. And typically, you update the failure rates of the components or create new parts to deal with components that aren't being used in the way you thought they were. And this is a closed loop. Update, regenerate, compare. Update, regenerate the FMEDA and compare. And we've been doing this now for 15 years. And we're finally getting to the point about five years ago where things are looking clean. Here's a comparison between FMEDAs of 35 different pressure transmitters, the little blue diagonals. The green dots are field failure data estimates from Dow Chemical, published and from Morita. The average of the FMEDAs is a little bit higher than the real field failure data. So that indicates to me that maybe the component database for FMEDA is a bit too conservative, higher failure rate. You also notice that there's quite a scatter of the blue dots. That represents the difference in design strength between these different products. We can define by analyzing the difference in design strength, upper and lower bounds, and we use that to generate some comparison charts, which I'll tell you about shortly. After 15 years of comparison, the results are finally coming out pretty accurately. This is a comparison used on solenoid valve data, a mechanical device. 
There's a number of different kinds of solenoids, and they're all aggregated in most of these databases, including Orita and Dow, and including a pipeline data set that we received. And you can see those numbers in the green. And you know, it get, it's interesting to me that the green dots are lining up kind of nicely. The average for the FMEDA is a bit high, which indicates again that perhaps the component database for the FMEDA is a little conservative, but that's okay. In fact, since then we have adjusted it as we explained. And then there's some other data, including some B10 data, which is really bad news. It's a warning, do not use B10 data. Well, how do I know when I get a piece of data if it's any good or not? How do I know if it's in a reasonable range? You know, like plus or minus three sigma? Exeta has created a web page called SILSAFE Data. In SILSAFE Data, we have taken all the FMEDA results for a wide variety of different designs, the Arita data, chemical industry data, power industry data, and the FMEDA statistical analysis, and established for specific devices an upper bound and a lower bound on the dangerous undetected failure rate. Why did we do that? Our clients asked us to provide some way they could check data. This is a screenshot of what F SILSAFE data looks like, and you're most welcome to get on the website and look for yourself because we do update this. For example, a pressure transmitter, either analog or smart, will be between 80 and 500 fits, dangerous undetected failure rate. That's plus or minus three sigma based on all the data we have. Over 350 billion hour, unit operating hours. A safety certified device will have a much lower dangerous undetected failure rate between 20 and 150. Why? Much better diagnostics as required by IEC 61508. Here's another shot of final element devices. And you can see all kinds of different products lower bound and upper bound failure rate data. Let's just take, I want to focus on this one, a pneumatic scotch yoke spring return. Reason, even unreasonable limits of plus or minus three sigma say the dangerous undetected should, should be a minimum of 400 or somewhere up to 1250. So I get a piece of data and I'm going to use SILSAFE data to do a comparison. I pull out the data sheet and it says 17.3 fits. Hold it. The low limit's 400. Oh my gosh. This is more than an order of magnitude too low. And quite frankly, this is exactly the sort of thing you get when manufacturer's warranty data is used with optimistic assumptions on the part of the manufacturer. Not good. And now you can tell by looking at SILSAFE data to reject this particular data. Exeter does have an FMEDA tool. It's called FMEDA X. It now has a calibrated electronic, mechanical, and sensor database that is generating really accurate, relatively accurate predictions. Do we know this is exactly right? No. Obviously, we'd like more data, and we're working on that. But for the time being, if we're a little bit conservative by generating slightly higher failure rate numbers, that's OK. In part four, we talked about combination methods using estimates and predictions. Combine them into one method, and we combine them into a closed loop iterative method that was painful and a lot of work, 
but we think we finally got it right. We talked about this method called the calibrated FMEDA and the tool we've generated, FMEDA-X, and we've compared the failure rate data. Now, we conclude a few things that are important. You can really do a nice job of optimizing a design if you have realistic failure rate data. And I mean trade-off between false trip rate, which can be very expensive, and safety. We found many designs where we could drop the false trip rate significantly with a minor, trivial sacrifice in safety. And that means economic benefit. Estimation techniques have many assumptions which can lead to a wide range between upper bound and lower bound. Assumptions have to be made carefully and the data has to be used only in limited ways. Prediction techniques alone can't meet the field failure requirements of IEC 61511 and that's a problem. Besides, you know what the defect is. Could be a bad component database. A combination method of estimation and prediction can provide more realistic and timely results. That method is available in the Exeter FMEDA X tool. And lastly, more field failure data is always welcomed. I got another set just yesterday. And you might think it's weird, but many of us just love looking at field failure rate data. It's almost my hobby. Anyway, four parts. We hope your time has been well spent. Thank you for attending the series on getting good failure rate data. If you need more information, don't hesitate to get the book I referenced. Don't hesitate to look at the white papers on the Exeter website and the Exeter webinars. And lastly, if you need, if you have a question, don't hesitate to send us an email at info at exeter.com. Thank you again for your time. Goodbye. Thank you.